Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan DeLeon and I am the Marketing Director at Focus First LLC. I'd like to thank you for being here with me today. Uh, I'm just going to show you what we do and what the visual pricing system is. I'm going to show you how powerful of a tool it is for realtors to help them both price homes and present that information in an easy to read way um, to their customers. I'm going to show you how fast it is and the speed of, of ease of use. Um, and I'm just going to just give you a quick demo of what the visual pricing system is and what it can do for, for you as a realtor or, or for anyone you know that happens to be selling real estate. So first the question is, what is the visual pricing system? The visual pricing system is the premier real estate pricing and presentation software tool out there today. Now I say that because although you've seen other tools be able to put graphs out there, be able to help you sell a house, the one thing that our program does that no other programs do is they allow you as the realtor to really leverage your expertise. You get to use your own MLS search to create own beautiful graphs that aren't just giving basic information, but they're answering key customer questions. Okay, so what it is is a system that allows you to input your MLS search and create beautiful, informative graphs that not only help you price homes, but help your customers understand what you're saying to them. Okay, so the way it works is you get to do your own MLS search through your own MLS. So for instance, for Northern Colorado, this is Iris. And through Iris, you make a search for a neighborhood like I did right here. What you do then is you export your file and it saves your desktop and you load it into the visual pricing system. From there, the system starts to really work and really take you on its journey. Uh, like I said, what is so different about it is that you get to customize that. You get to do your search however you need to or however you want to. You can search for, let's say, you know, properties that border the river. Or maybe you know that two-story bedroom houses aren't as good as ranches in this certain neighborhood. Well, a two-story house in some neighborhoods might be better. You get to choose and pick which data informative points are really relevant. Okay, so... I'm going to show you really quickly how this all works and how you can go about using this for your own business. Now, before I, I get into this, I know the number one question people are going to ask is what's the price? Okay. I'm going to address the, the, you know, the giant purple elephant in the room. Yes. I'm going to tell you that I want you to buy our system because honestly I sold real estate and I don't think that without these tools, you're really pricing a house correctly. Now the price itself for the tool is $25 a month. We do this because, we update it constantly so that it always works with MLSs. Uh, I'm sure that you have experienced a change in MLS in your lifetime um, or in your career in real estate. And so you can imagine that happens across the nation and in Canada. So we, we're updating it constantly and adding new features and making it more user friendly based on your feedback. So we're big believers in showing is better than telling. So I've told you a lot right now. Now I'm going to show you. Okay. So first things first. This is the visual pricing system. It's based in Microsoft Excel, so you do have to have Excel to use it, but the best part about that is you're pretty familiar with how to do the basic um, operations you need to have. So when you open the program, this is the first page you're gonna see. It has a little write up here and it has some tutorial links so you can come check out some awesome tutorial videos we have online that can show you how to use every part of this product. Okay, but I'm gonna start, start here by clicking the start here button. Now this start here button lets you load in a file that you have made before. So this file, in this case, is titled export 71. This is just the MLS search that I made on here and then exported to my desktop, clicking the export button. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up and let the program do its work. Now the first thing that pops up here is it asks, what subdivision area of the city would you like to place these on these graphs? This is, what is the title of these graphs? In this case, the subdivision I searched for was called English Ranch, and that's in Fort Collins. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Done. All right? Give us a couple seconds, and now your results are complete. Now I'm going to stop right here. This is the results of the neighborhood statistics that answer key customer questions. The actual pricing is going to take a little bit extra work because, you know what? There's no such thing as a right answer or just easy click of a button to get the right price for a house. Okay? So we're going to click here first down this bottom tab, check out the neighborhood patterns. Now these neighborhood patterns are super powerful, okay? This graph here answers the key customer question of what are the odds of my house selling? As every customer knows, not every house that goes in the market actually sells. 
So you would want to know, is your neighborhood at the top of the range or is it not as good so that you can plan ahead according to your price? Can you be aggressive and try and get a little bit more? Or do you need to be really careful and maybe just take a little bit less so you don't sit on the market for a year and a half? Okay, you can see here, the odds of selling in this neighborhood are pretty high. This is a pretty nice neighborhood in Fort Collins um, and pretty in demand because it's where the, a lot of the expansion is happening. As so you can see here, 86% means almost all the houses in that neighborhood have sold. Now, if you're big on absorption rates, this is where they also come in. Now, we don't, we don't call it the absorption rate. We actually just give it the simple meaning because the simple meaning, the simple definition is what your customers will understand. If you tell your customers, oh, you know, there's a 1.5 absorption rate, what does that mean? If we say, hey, look, homes are selling at one and a half a month, ah, I get what that means. You know, every two months, three houses are selling. That makes sense to me. So it's pretty simple here. So this is the last 12 months of activity. You can see here the blue is sold, the red is the withdrawn or expired, the house did not sell, and the green are the ones that are currently for sale. Now there's no that are currently under contract, so you don't see any yellow bars at this moment. Um, so you have three here, graphs, first of the last year, the year so far in 2015, um, and then the summary of 2014. Now I'm include the summary of the year before, because sometimes you can, you can always make the search, let's say in February. So the, the summary of 2015 is going to have almost nothing. Um, so the 2014 will probably be more relevant at that point. Okay, next graph that show the neighborhood patterns are the time to sell patterns. This addresses the key customer question of how long should it take for my house to sell? So you can see here, we plot it all out. You can see what the average days before sold is. Now, the interesting thing to see about this graph is even though across all the different price ranges, it's not that big of a difference versus a $320,000 price or a $420,000 price, I guess 417. You can see the that the difference is not among price range, but once you get past, let's say about 90 days sold, you can see nothing selling. So if, if you're at that point, you know I probably messed up on the pricing. Something went wrong. Okay, now again, we include the year before. So you can see here, this is actually a pretty consistent neighborhood. 61 days average, 58 days average. Average sold is 348 last year, 361. You can see it's probably appreciating. Um, this is all the information I'm taking from this part of the graph here. Again, I'm running through this pretty quickly just because I want to show you a quick version of how this all works. But um, the next graph we have here is called the buying pattern. This suggests, addresses the key customer question of what is the best time for my house to sell? You can see here that we put the thick lined boxes around the areas where the most houses are selling. Dotted line is any area that kind of almost in is included in that. Um, so you can see, you can almost, you could probably almost connect these if you wanted to and say that this neighborhood sells greater from May to October. Clearly this is a neighborhood that really is patterned around the uh, end of school and families moving in and out kind of neighborhood. Now not all neighborhoods will be like that. You'll see sometimes if the pattern is elsewhere. Um, again, 2014 graph here, you can see we're probably about the same May to early November, end of October. So, um, now we're getting to the real meat of it. Okay, this is the pricing area of the visual pricing system. Now, the reason we have the neighborhood graphs and the reason that they're there is for the key reason of you can start getting a feel for how you much you can push, shove, and wiggle room around, you know, certain pricing things. Now, when I say push, shove, wiggle room, I'm explaining why I'm saying wiggle room here by showing you a quick graph, okay? I'm gonna click here and select scattergram data. We like scattergrams because scattergrams give you a very easy to see relationship between houses that have sold. So I'm just gonna grab the data. What I just did there is grab the last six months of data. Um, now obviously you can, you can, if you wanna get really in depth, you could probably deselect, let's say if you're pricing a ranch. You can deselect the two stories and see if the relationship is better between those versus versus ranches. So you can get more into it, but I'm just gonna do this very basic today and create a scattergram graph. I'm gonna graph it based on the finished square feet versus the sale price. Um, and then I'm gonna show the trend line, just show a line that basically shows, you know, where what is the relation between these two. So your scattergram is now complete. Load this up. Oh, cool. You can see that there actually is a pretty good relation. You can see this line here, if you follow that line, in most cases, the dots are, are very close to following that line. This really establishes a tight relationship between finished square feet and the average sale price for the houses there. Now you see this guy here is, is down pretty low. So what you would do then is you can look at the MLS search 
and find that house through the MLS numbers um, and figure out wait, what caused it to be so low. You know, was it maybe on a busy road versus the restaurant cul-de-sacs? Was, was it lacking some other special features? This graph right here allows you to bring in all five factors of pricing. We call it five factors of pricing because we believe there are five. Uh, we believe there are five when you're looking at the historical viewpoint, I should say. So the first is location. Now, in this case, we're able to take a lot of the variables of location out because we searched by the neighborhood. The neighborhood is pretty much in the same location. Now we're looking at price versus size. So property price versus size by finished square feet, right? Then you adjust for special features and amenities and then hard surface upgrades. So you can see these are above the line. I'm guessing that both of these probably have some sort of hardwood added to them, or maybe granite countertops, or maybe they, they come with a hot tub or a built-in pool or something along those lines that helps them build up above this line. So you can look at this and your customers can look at this and let's and, and say let's their house is priced around 2500 Great. Now you're going to be priced around here somewhere. Now that being said, you have a pretty big circle at this, at this moment, but you now know, hey, we're pricing, let's say we're pricing and it's, uh, and it's today, right? Are we anywhere in the buying pattern? No. So you're not going to be wanting to push too far above the line. Otherwise, you might not sell. Why do I say you might not sell? Because the next buying pattern is a lot more than 90 days out. If you remember, after about 90 days, pretty much nothing's selling. Okay? So it becomes a, a give and take relationship between these graphs. The, that's what the real power of the visual pricing system is. It's not just about, hey, here's some information. Let me tell you what the price should be. It leads you through a decision-making process in the perfect way. Okay. Now, we also have what we call the positioning graph. Now, in this case, because there's only one house that's on the market, it's a little bit weird to see. Okay. But I'm just going to show you this anyways. Okay. And graph this with finished square feet. This graph would show up down here as we call the DPMS gram or the dynamic pricing scattergram graph. Now, in most cases, there's a lot more triangles and dots on here. Now, in this search, there isn't. So what I would probably do is go back to my MLS and do a search for all the houses that are active in, the, in a bigger, broader area, maybe just do Southeast Fort Collins, not necessarily this neighborhood, that are around the price I was thinking about and around the square footage I was thinking about. And you'd get a lot more dots on here. And then we'd be able to, to really look and see where's our competition at. Because, I mean, we can't list for, you know, 400,000 if our square footage is back here because you can see... All of a sudden, for 400,000, they might be able to get a house for 2,800 square feet. Well, we're at 2,500 square feet. 300 feet makes a huge difference. So you can start going back and forth with that. Uh, we have a lot of other awesome graphs that you can watch the tutorials on to check them out. Um, there's, they really show in a great visual kind of way the way that the real estate market works. This, for instance, is called the real estate pond. We always like to talk about it as like a farm pond. And when, when houses flow in, they're priced right, they get shown, they get offers, they flow right back out. Now, if they're weighed down by poor pricing, and I say poor pricing, it's not always a high price. Sometimes it can be too low of a price that puts a negative image on the house. It can go into the area where it gets shown but doesn't get the offers. And if you're really, really not careful, you can hit that stagnant mass, which when you hit that muck, that mud on the bottom of the farm pond, that just makes you stuck. So what do you have to do? Massive price cuts to try and float yourself back into this flow area to get an offer and get out of the market. So these are what the really graphs are, are here for. When you combine all these graphs together, you can see what ends up working. Okay, you can see that this all built a strategy. Now the best part about this is you can see it, which means that your customers can also see it. Okay, now what we like to do is we usually take these graphs, print them out as a it's a PDF, um, and then use these PDFs, save this to my desktop here, uh, let's see, I'll just save this as, oopsies, yeah, save this PDF, okay, as buying pattern. Then we will use these, these graphs as they're saved as PDF, right, which we can, we can load up and we can look at. We would use these in our pricing path CMA templates, which our customers also get. 
These templates allow you to walk through the same process that I just walked through in a lot slower and, and more meaningful way with your customers. You input the pictures of your graphs into this, TMA, this CMA and go through this whole process with them. You show them the list of things. You end up putting the neighborhood's addresses on there so you can see what is and what is not selling and why it is or is not selling for that reason. This, for instance, is one of those competitive graphs. You can see a lot more dots are here. You end up putting a lot more information in there. And then you print this out and you take it with them and you show it to your customers. Now, the greatest thing about all of these and when it, the way it works is that you are the expert in your area. Even if you don't know anything about that neighborhood. Look, if, if I gave you that search and you didn't know anything about the neighborhood, you could tell me what the odds of the houses in that neighborhood are selling, when the best time to sell, how long to sell, how long it should take for the house to sell, and if your house with this square footage, about what the house would be selling for today. You're, you're automatically the expert just by using this information. Now, throw in the fact that you are the expert because you're the realtor in your area, and you can start excluding certain data points that don't work out. Maybe, for instance, if we go back to the, uh, the scattergram, maybe we know this guy here was a foreclosure. Okay, so we can look, this is, square footage on that is 2622, right? So let's go back, square footage, finished square foot, that is, 2622. You can click here and clear that and say, look, I know that that one should not count. So I'm going to remake that graph um, without that. Okay, now I actually deleted the trend line as well. But you can see the trend line here would end up being a little higher. And you know that is the more accurate graph because the truth is you are the one that knows your area better than anyone else. So we let you leverage your expertise and really show all that you are. Okay. Again, like I said, this is $25 a month. The fact is, is you're going to use this once and realize how did I price without it? I really don't understand how people th think that they're pricing when they aren't using this, this tool. Now, where can people get this tool? At focusfirst.com. Focus1st.com. Now, the other great thing we have on focus1st.com or focusfirst.com is we have a great support area. Okay? In the support area, we have links, which are to our, our YouTube channel, which we put new tutorials and new videos on on a constant basis. We have the visual pricing support blog, which just has more articles about tricky questions and tricky uh, CMAs that we go through so that you can really help yourself out. We always have support. You can email us or give us a, a call. And a lot of times we do online meetings with people when they're really having a tough time. Um, on top of that, we now cover hundreds of MLSs all across the nation and in Canada. So this list here just shows you how to set your MLS up and how to do the export so you can save the file to your desktop just like I did here so that your system will work super easy. <clears throat> this all being said, I am a huge proponent of the power of these tools. The reason I, I do this marketing and I, and I work for this company is because I sold real estate. The man that made the product, which happens to be my father, sold real estate. My mother is one of the top 1,000 realtors, according to the Wall Street Journal, in the nation. And she will attest that a lot of the business she gets is from these tools. So please, check it out. Let me know what you think, because in honesty, I love them. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon.